right? Mm -hmm. Huh? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So cold up my sister. Good morning to everyone. Let us uh, stand up. Let's open up this prayer. Amen. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that you have allowed us to come together one more time to share your holy word. Now, Father, as we come, we come, Father, humble. We come meek and lowly at heart. And we come seeking the Holy Ghost, to lead us and to guide us into all truth and to show us things to come. Father, we can't make it on our own. We know, Father, that we, that we are mere human flesh. And, Father, we bring our flesh under subjection to the Holy Spirit. Let your kingdom come. Your will be done today in our lives, in earth as it is in heaven. Help us to refocus our attention on those things, Father, that will cause us not to live self-righteous life, but righteous in your presence. Because we can't do it in our own strength. So, Father, we look to you and we thank you, Lord God, for leading us and directing our hearts. Now, I ask you to not every ear to hear, but prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer to write your word upon the hearts, upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And we come with you, Father, to give you all the praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Welcome and welcome to New Life in Christ Jesus Church, where Jesus Christ is glorified. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You know, we serve a good God. We just got back this, uh, this morning from, from San Diego. Yeah. We made it back in time to have service today. You know why? Because this is where our heart was at. <laughs> was to be at home this morning. Amen. We could have stayed where we was, but no, we wanted to come back home and do our job here. Because this is where God wants us. And we didn't want to be out of place. Amen. We've been dealing with this message though all year concerning the Holy Spirit and walking in righteousness and holiness. God has called the church back to righteousness and holiness for the simple fact that we're about to come into some, some uh, trying times in life. And God wants you to be uh, equipped. He wants you to be prepared. He wants you to be ready to take a firm stand against the kingdom of darkness. How many of you know the devil, he's working overtime trying to defeat, trying to, to, to destroy the church, trying to defeat the church, 
But how many you know that that he don't have a, a, a voice? He don't have a voice. The only voice he has is when you yield to him. <laughs> That's the only voice he has. Amen. Why? Because he's a fallen, he's a fallen being. He don't even have a body. Amen. You, you, but but when you but when but he, he's walking around and he, he's walking around and he trying to figure out who can he use, who will yield to him so that he can express himself in the earth. Amen. And so we need to understand that he doesn't have a voice, he doesn't have a body, but yet a lot of Christians are living a defeated life because they are yielding to him instead of to God's way of living. Amen. When we yield to God's way of living, we're, we're, we're yielding to righteousness. You know, some people say, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop watching uh, Netflix and, and radio movies and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start living righteous. You know, this is what we call, this is what the Bible calls self righteousness, because you're trying to do it in your own strength. Because when you live before God, when you start living your life according to the Word of God, you don't have to to put away these things. Because the closer you get to God, you're gonna stop, you're gonna automatically stop doing them. Why? Because you're gonna start coming under conviction conviction. Amen. You're gonna start coming under conviction. Why are you gonna come under conviction? Because the, the, the life and the nature of God is pure and it's holy. And the closer you get to God, the more of the world you're gonna disregard. But you don't understand, Pastor. This is a this is a mind thing. No, it's not a mind thing. That's the whole that's the whole point we're trying to make. You trying to do it with your own with your own mindset. You trying to figure it out and trying to make yourself righteous by the by, by turning away from some things. Well, it's good that you turn away from some things. That's great, but that's not that don't make you holy, Amen. Because just because you turn away from the day, tomorrow you'll be doing the same thing. You only turn away from it so it'll look right in the eyes of man. But what about the eyes of God? <laughs> what about in the eyes of God? See, God wants us to God want us to see ourselves walking according to the word. Remember how Jesus walked? And you know, if you walk like he walked, you're going to walk according to the word. Why? Because Jesus was the word in the flesh. He walked the word. He lived the word. He breathed the word. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Amen. And verse 14 said, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Talking about Jesus. Amen. So if we're going to live a righteous and a holy life, then we can't, it's not, it's not, it's not about us trying to figure out what do I need to do? What what I need to leave off? What do I need to stop doing? Amen. It's all about, Lord, I'm going to go to first. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the Word of God, Second Timothy chapter two, verse fifteen. I'm going to study and show myself approved. Amen. That 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 a workman of God need not be ashamed, right and dividing the Word of Truth. I'm going to. I'm going to do my part. I'm going to study. I'm going to. I'm going to strengthen my spirit in the Word. I'm going to come to the knowledge of what the Word is saying about me. And as I do, Lord, I'm asking you to, that you would help me to live. According to the word. And when I make that decision, when I declare, God, I want to live according to the word, I'm saying, God, I'm yielding. I'm laying my whole life before you. I I, I, I surrender all. Amen. This is what God is looking for us. He's looking for us to surrender all. Why? Because this is the only way that you can live a righteous life. You can't live a righteous life. Oh, try just because you stop watching Netflix. It's not, it's not a, a mind thing. Amen. Glory to God. So we have to understand what God is saying to us, and we got to we got to see what what God is asking of us to do. What God is asking us to do. The Bible says for us to 
to to to humble ourselves. Amen. Let's let's look at some things because see, God is looking for the church to return to Him in righteousness and in and in holiness. Amen. And when we return to God, we're going to see that God's word is going to work in us, the hope of glory. But let's look at Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 5, man. Ephesians chapter 5. And look at verse number 26 and 27. Ephesians 5, verse 26 and 27. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26, 27. 20, 20, 26 says, that he might sanctify and cleanse it. Talking about what? He's talking about the church. Amen. Because scripture revealed that we are needing a cleansing. Because the wages of sin is death. How many of you know? How many of you know that? That that you still that you still having problems with, with sin, your your sin that sinful nature is still trying to uh, bring you into bondage, amen. See, this is what this is this is the whole point God is trying to trying to bring across to our heart because see we trying to we trying to do it in our own strength and God and, and God is not that's not the way God expects for the, for you to do it because you see that, you know because he said right here that he might. Be sanctified or set apart and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. That he that he might present it to who? To himself, a glorious church. Not having a what? A spot or wrinkle. Or any such thing. That he that it should be holy and without blemish. And that what it says? That it should be holy and without blemish. Amen. So God is looking for us, the church, because you see, we have to see ourselves walking in a line with the word of God. The church in many instances are have diverted from the path that God has called it to walk. Because you see a lot of people in church living like the world is living and they are not uh, uh, they're not even considering their lifestyle. They think that it's all right because they see people that are, and, and you know, now they, they may be making a mistake, amen, but it just may be the way they live. <clears throat> but God has called us to see it. God has called us to examine our hearts. He's called us to 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 look at our look at our look at our our, our lives from the from His standpoint of view. Because when we do, we're going to see that God is calling us and separating us, setting us apart from the world. From the world. Amen. And when and, and as he does, and as he does, you see, because see, there's a great need for the there's a great need for, for, for you to return, for you and I to return to holiness. Why? Because Without such, you can't see the Lord. You can't see the Lord. Amen. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrew, chapter 12, verse number 14. See, we have to. It's time for us to it's time for us to to begin to uh Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, 15. For, for, there, for there have we no contending city. That might be the right thing, Lord. But we seek one to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. 
Amen. Giving thanks to his name. In other words, in other words, he wants us to follow, pursue righteousness, holiness. Am I reading the right chapter? Yeah. I'm in chapter 12. I'm in chapter 13. Chapter 12. I'm supposed to be in chapter 12. Yeah. I thought that wasn't reading right. <laughs> 12. Thank you, Lord. Here we go. I got you now. <clears throat> Amen. At verse 14 and 15, chapter, chapter 12. That was in chapter 13. <laughs> Amen. But that was good too. But chapter 14 is what we're really looking for. Chapter 12 is what we're really looking for. Verse number 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Without such no man shall see God, shall see the Lord. Amen. Now look at verse number 15. Looking diligent lest any man fell a fall from grace of God. Lest the root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. The bitter is something that's it's something that have it's something. That, the, the bitter root is something, it's just like a, a tear been planted. A weeds that been planted in your good grass, in your good yard, in that good ground. You know, the Bible said wheat and tear grow together. We, we, we did it. We had a good message on that last, last week, didn't we? About the wheats and tears. Amen. But this is what he's talking about right now. Amen. This is what he's talking about right now. Notice what he said. Notice what he said right here. Verse number fifteen again. He, uh, uh, no, verse number, four, verse number fourteen. Follow after follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fit or fall, fall, fall from fall of grace, fall of the grace of God, fell, and, and, and now get this, lest any root of bitterness spring up, trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Many be defiled. See, your tongue can cause you to be defiled. Because out of the bun of the heart, the mouth speaks. And that's why you got that's why you got to watch what you allow in your heart. Because those wheat and tares come and begin to grow because you have allowed it. Because you have allowed it. You pay more attention to the things that you should not be looking at. or pay, You pay more attention to the things you should be uh, 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 turning away from. And you allow these things to, to entertain you. And when you allow these things to entertain you, you are opening up yourself for tares to be planted in the same field where your wheat, the good seed that's been planted. And when it begins to grow, it's going to begin to grow up in the same areas where the good seed is growing up and it's going to begin to choke the life out of the good seed that's been planted in your heart. And before you know it, you're going to start, you're going to start uh, reverting back to that old lifestyle because you allow certain things to, to remain in your presence or you kept focused on certain things that, and you didn't turn away from it. And because you didn't turn away from it, you gave place to it and you, and you allow it, you allowed it to grow. And you didn't even, you didn't even uh, look at it as though it was evil. You didn't even look at it as though it was unclean. You didn't even look at it as though it wasn't godly. You looked at it as it was. And because you did, you allowed the enemy access to your heart. 
And then out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Now you're saying things, you're, you're starting to curse again, you're starting to uh, 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 say things to uh, manipulate people and, and doing things that you shouldn't be doing. Why? Because you allow this without without uh, coming against it. You, you allowed it. You didn't, you didn't take a stand against it. You, 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 you allowed it. And because you allowed it, the enemy had access. <clears throat> the enemy had access because we, we allow certain things. And God wants us to <clears throat> God wants us to, to turn away from these areas in our lives. He wants us to see ourselves, amen, returning to the right path that he called us to walk. Amen. The church in the church in some instances have, as as, as previously mentioned, is is walking head and hand in hand with the world and falling and failing to recognize the fact. Failing to recognize the fact. Why? Because they are content in their lifestyle. They are content in the way they in the way they're walking. Amen. See the whole generation, whole generation. This generation that's coming up right now, except. Except they see the righteousness of God in you, and that you're living, and you and you walking the path that God called you to walk. You see, you this whole generation that's coming up behind us, they're gonna miss it, boy. They're gonna miss it. Amen. And this is, and I'm telling you, this is not the will of God. That's why God is calling us to examine our heart so that the generation behind us can see. That God is who He said He is, and that the life and the nature of God is not something that we can that we can oh my God that we can just uh, take for granted. Amen. It's not something that we take for granted. This is what God is expecting out of us. Amen. So you see, a generation is a generation of believers has to, has evaded the the, the 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 path that God has called them to walk, the path of righteous and righteous living. They're going about to establish their own way and not submit themselves to the righteousness of God. Amen? And not submit themselves to the righteousness of God and they don't see it, they don't understand it and because they don't understand it, they are in trouble. Amen? And, and they are pursuing a path contrary to the, to the will of God. Amen? They're pursuing a path that contrary to the will of God. And, and they're winding up thinking that they're walking the, 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 the narrow path. They think that they're walking a the narrow path. But when they if they step back and take a real and they really begin to examine the, what, the way that they're going, they're gonna find out that they are on the on the on the 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 the, the big path, the what do you call it path? The wide, the wide path. The, the road that leads to what? Destruction, Amen. And the Bible said many of be there will go that way. Because you see, they are so caught up in themselves. They don't see what God is saying to them concerning their own life. They listen to, to people that they admire and they are being misled. They've been, they've been, and they're, and they're full, full, they're full in their head, full of confusion. And now they don't know which way to turn. They don't know which way to turn. Don't know which way to go. God has given us the path to walk. He's showing us which way we ought to go. Amen. Amen. So now, so now, God is it and pursuing the path contrary to the to the to the to the straight and narrow way. Jesus spoke of. We, if we don't pursue that path, then we're going to stray away from the way of righteousness because we're going to do. Our own thing. We're gonna live the way we think we're gonna live. We're not gonna live the way God had called us to live. We're gonna do what we want to do. Amen. And we're gonna enter in at the at the straight gate. If we're gonna if we're gonna enter in at the straight gate, then we're gonna find out that wide is the gate and narrow is the way that lead to wide is the gate and broad is the way that lead to destruction. Amen. And so you're gonna find many walking that path. And I hope I don't see you on that path. Because there's many walking that path, the way of destruction, and if and if you get caught on that path, guess what, folks? Uh, that's gonna that's you're gonna have to you have to, oh uh, my God! If you don't get off before before that uh that deadline come, 
If you don't get off before that deadline comes, you're going to be caught. And if you're caught in hell, you will lift up your eyes in torment and in flames. But Pastor, you know God ain't gonna send nobody. And we are we ain't doing nothing bad. We we love everybody. We 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 are we just just being people. <laughs> That's not the criteria to get in. Amen. That's not what God is looking for. That's not the answer God is looking for. God is looking for a repentive heart. God is looking for a repentive heart. He's looking for someone to acknowledge his wrong. Amen. Enter in. Look at look look at uh, look at Matthew chapter seven. <clears throat> Matthew seven verse thirteen and fourteen. Just let's just read it from the Bible. Amen. Let's just read it. Matthew seven. How many of you like Matthew seven? Matthew seven. I've got a new Bible, so I have to take my time to turn these pages. Amen. Matthew 7. And let's, let's just start with verse number 12. Matthew 7, verse number 12. Said, Therefore all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. I like this now. Verse number 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. See, how many people you know right now that are in church but yet are still living like the world? See, these are the people that God is, these are the people that God is talking to because he's trying to bring them in the right path. He's trying to warn them because hell is a real place and hell is opening, it's, it's enlarging itself because people are refusing to follow the path that God has called them to walk. Amen. They're choosing to go their own way and not, and not pay attention to what God is saying to them. And because of that fact, they are entering in the, 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 the wide and, and the wide and broad way, which lead to destruction. Amen. Look what it says again, verse number 13. Enter ye in at the at the at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way, which do what? Lead it to destruction. Amen. Now, how do we know if we're walking this road? How do we know if we're walking the, 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 the wide path? Amen. If 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 you're not convicted. Participating in the things that the worldly people are doing, the people that don't they have not opened their heart to Christ. If you're not, if you are content and walking like they walk, living like they're living, doing what they're doing, let me tell you something. Then you are on the wrong path. You're on the wrong path. You need to you need to examine your heart because see, God has called us, God has called us to that narrow path, which leads, look at verse number, look at look at the next verse, verse number what? Verse number 15. Verse number 14. Verse number 14 says, Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. Which leadeth unto life. Amen. So we are we we have a we have a we have to an obligation to our own heart. To examine our heart. To examine our motives. To examine what we're doing. Amen. And examine the way of our of our going. Because I tell you, when I started this message, I made a new year resolution that this year my life is going to begin to line up according to the word of God like never before. And I've come a long way, folks, believe me. Because I, I have been through so much spiritual warfare because of my decision. And I've been had so many mind attacks because of my decision. I even had some health attacks because of my decision. Amen. But my 
heart has been made up. My mind is set. And I'm not turning back. And God wants you to see yourself making this same commitment because this is where the anointing rests. This is where the power of God resides. This is where you see the, the devils cast out. This is where you see the healings take place. When you are walking in alignment with the word of God and with the will of God, you are saying, God, I surrender all to you. Amen. I lay my life down before you, and, I, and I'm not doing it because I'm being forced to do it, Lord. I willingly set my feet on the path that you called me to walk. Because, you see, when you first were born again, when you were first born again, you was automatically placed on that path. Because when God translated you from the kingdom of darkness, he set your feet on the path that he wanted you to walk. Amen. He placed you in that path that he ordained for you to maintain your Christian walk. But because we have been fault so hard and so strong in this area. Oh, you think you're some kind of holy roadie or something, huh? You better get out there and you better and, and, and this is when somebody want to live a celibate life, you better go get you a man. Oh, you better go get you a woman. Who do you think you are? You think you're someone special? Let me tell you something. When I was when when God called me, I was living a celibate life. I was, but I was working on a job with all these secular people, and God had just called me to preach, and these people kept on messing with me, kept on messing with me. So, <laughs> they, they this, <laughs> you better go get you a. You know, a woman, or you better, you know, they, they, they don't want to see light around them. Why? Because they're so engrossed in darkness that they will do everything they can to dim your light. And so I left that job, and that would find me another job. Because that job was working around a whole lot of women. You ever heard of, uh, 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 it was a, it was a processing plant mm -hmm. for chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you like it is. Hey man, it was a processing plant for chickens. They, we had to cut them up and clean them up and do all that stuff and bring, cook. And that's what, that's, that's what, that was a young man then though. I'm not, I, it was back when I was young. And this is what, and this is where, this is where I, I had, I had to work somewhere, so I, I got that job, and uh, and they were called the Wayne Poultry. That's what they called. That was the name of the place, Wayne Poultry, in, in Decatur, Alabama. Wayne Poultry. <laughs> it was a wild place. And and when I was working there, God called. Me, this is I was working there when I was working on the farm, and God called me to preach. But then I tried to find me a better job where I could get some insurance and stuff. So I started working there. And I didn't last that long because I, I couldn't put up with that. And so I got out of that. I got out of that. And I went back and I went back to construction work. Construction work, you work, you not people not they don't have time to mess with your own construction work because you everybody on everybody they on they they, they, they follow their assignment. Amen. They follow their assignment. So I went back to construction. And on my breaks I could sit down and read my little Bible without being without being tormented. And and I love that. Yeah, I was it, uh, and then and now, now I'm working a job now where I'm not being tormented by the, by the women telling me you need to do this, you need to do that. I, I said, I, I got to get away from here. And I left that job, and I went to start back on working construction, and now I'm working a job now where I can live a life that was pleasing to God without all this temptation around me. 
because there was mostly all men around there. And everybody had their own assignment. You didn't have to worry about none, none of that, that kind of talk around you. Amen. And so I, at my break time, I will, I, I used to have this little booklet right here. I used, when I go to the bathroom, take my take a bathroom break, I used to take this little book, Charles Cap, God Creator Power. And I would sit down in the bathroom while I, and, I, and I would take three minutes mm -hmm. and I would read this real fast. Mm -hmm. I can almost quote this thing by heart now. I've read it so much. And I'm still doing it. I'm still doing it today. Amen. I did it this morning before I left the, the hotel. And I did it again on, I did it again right before I started the service. Amen. And I did it last night before I went to sleep. I, I try to do it at least two, three times a day. Yeah. I, I like to speak the word over my life. Why? Because when I speak the word over my life, I'm giving God place to move. Amen. Amen. I'm giving, I'm, I'm strengthening my spirit so I can maintain my, my commitment. Because if I don't strengthen my spirit, the commitment that I made to God goes straight out the back door. Fly right out of the window. Amen. Why? Because I'm not strengthening myself. This is why God wants us to, this is why God is calling us, this is why God is calling us to the narrow, to the straight and narrow path. Notice what he said again. Notice what he said again right here in, in the verse number Verse number uh, 14, he said, Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. If I don't stick with the word of God, if, I don't, if I'm not reading the word of God, if I'm not uh, 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 meditating on the word of God, I won't find that narrow path. I won't find it. Why? Because I'm so caught up in, the, I'm so caught up in my surroundings. I'm so caught up in, in what the eyes can see. What the hands can feel, what the nose can smell, what the ears can hear. You see, those five senses is gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be amplified because it's gonna work against the will of God. My flesh is gonna work against the will of God. But if I keep adding the scripture to my spirit daily, now. When I pray, when I begin to worship him, when I begin to cry out to him, when I begin to call upon his name, guess what's going to happen, folks? I'm going to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. Why? Because I apply the word to my heart rather than allowing my eyes to follow things that shouldn't be following on my ears to hear things that it shouldn't be hearing on my feet walking in a place that it shouldn't be going amen but because I'm I'm putting the word in my heart I am strong why because God said that I am and I believe him I believe him see the battle is not mine amen. the battle is not mine right. when I strengthen myself when I walk up right before the Lord the Lord God Almighty, the one that came down through the archives of time and saw that I needed a Savior who gave his life as a ransom for my sin. He paid the ultimate price with his own life. He gave me the opportunity to acknowledge what he had done for me, and I accepted it. Now, here I am, folks. I'm telling you right now that God has become an enemy to my enemies. Glory to God. Amen. He has become an enemy to my enemy because I yielded to him. I yielded to him. I yielded to his path. I yielded to his way. See, God is calling for the church to, to act for the old path. The, this generation that's coming up, they don't know nothing about the old path. They don't know nothing about the, they don't know nothing about walking up right before God. They don't know nothing about holiness. They don't know nothing about righteousness. They only know that I got born again. That's all they know. Amen. So now look at here. Look at here. Now let's look at something else here. Because we get we getting somewhere now. Because the prophet Jeremiah can proclaim, thus said the Lord. Let's turn to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 16. Jeremiah chapter 16. And let's look at let's look at uh, something here in verse uh, excuse me Jeremiah chapter six verse sixteen. Yeah. 
Amen. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Now notice, now notice how notice God is, is dealing with the children of Israel. Notice how, he deal, notice how he's dealing with them. Amen. Notice how he's dealing with them. Right here, verse number 16. Jeremiah 6, verse 16. Thus saith the Lord, Stand ye in the way and see. But stand ye in the way and see. And notice what it says. And ask for what? The old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein. See, God is giving them, he's giving them an opportunity. He's asking them to ask for it. He's asking them to call for it. Amen. And, and walk therein. And ye shall find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk therein. Who said that? The church of Israel. They said that. We will not walk therein. Look what it said, verse number six, verse the next verse, verse number 17. Also, I set watchmen, I set watchmen over you, saying, hearken unto the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not what? Hearken. We will not hear. Therefore, hear ye, nation, and know, O generation, what is among you? What is among them? O hear earth, behold, I will bring, get this now, evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words, nor to my law, but rejected it. This is why God is bringing us back to righteousness and holiness, because God is giving the world a call. He's calling the world back into he called the world to himself, but the world said, I will not hear it. And then God is allowing the trumpet to be sounded so the world can see that judgment is coming. And they said, we will not walk therein. Folks, we'll come in that God, God has given us, God has given us an opportunity to, to, to see ourselves walking in the fullness of who he is. He's calling us back to righteous living. He's calling us back to a holy lifestyle separated from the world so that the world, when they look upon you, they will see the light of God rather than the darkness all around you and you live in a, a, dark, a life full of darkness. See, I was born again, but I didn't know that I was not supposed to go to the clubs. I didn't know I was supposed to stop drinking. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to smoke no more dope. And I was a born again child of God. And I was doing that. But when I started to study the word of God, my life began to change. See, I, I got born again, but I never started studying. I never started reading. Therefore, there was no transformation. And I was not filled with the spirit of God. But the but but then but then after I started feeling yucky, you ever heard the word yucky? Because <laughs> I, 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 see, I used to, I used to love to sing, and I still do. I used to go to clubs, and I used to sing in the in the, in, the, in the clubs. Amen. I love I I I I, I, I like singing, and the bands up there playing. I'm up there singing. Close the door. Let me give you what you've been waiting for, baby. I got so much love to give. See, I used to love to do that. I don't do that no more. You know why I think now? I sing, I sing. <laughs> oh, come on now. <laughs> Amen. But I don't sing that kind of way no more. I still sing, but not, I don't sing those songs no more. You know, I don't sing those songs no more. I sing, I sing right now uh, the, the song that, that lifts your soul. Blessed assurance. Mm-hmm. Jesus is mine, and oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. See, when, be, before I got born again, I didn't sing these songs. But when I, but I, I was still, before I got born again, I was saying Teddy Pentagram and B.B. King and, 
and all them people. But when I got born again, I started singing the songs that builds me up on the inside. Amen. And I started not only building myself up, I start the singing those songs to build you up. The church, the church, the children of God. Amen. So now, what am I doing? I chose to, I chose to turn away from my sinful lifestyle, the lifestyle of sin and iniquity, and I chose to, to, to turn to the path that will edify, that will exalt, that will build up, that will establish you in the faith. Now, and as I go, as as life goes on, you get kind. Of, you, sometimes you get kind of cold in that in that walk because you have you, you you have so many oppositions, and you have so many people that 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 talk about you and turn against you and don't even really know who you are. But then they start telling other people lies about you. Now they hurting you and don't even know and don't even know you. And so, and so you, 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 you kind of go through the lifestyle like this, and then your family members turn against you. Your own blood. Amen. And so now you got you're trying to figure out, Lord, I don't know if the, I don't know if I don't know if this is worth it. And so you kind of backslide a little bit. But then when you realize what you've done. And the word of God said, I'd rather that you be hot or cold. <laughs> because if you're lukewarm, I'm going to do what? I'm going to spear you out. You know, I'm going to vomit you up. <laughs> Amen. So we don't want, we don't want to be caught, we don't want to be caught living a, 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 a lukewarm life. We don't want to be caught living a cold life. We want to be caught living a hot life. I want to be on fire for God. I want to serve God with my whole heart. I want to live the life that God will look upon me and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou have been faithful over a few things. Now come on up, I'm going to make you ruler over much. I want to live a life that when God look upon me, he can say, son, you, I want you to go to this person and I want you to open up your heart and share with them. And as you open up your heart and share with them, I'm going to heal them. I'm going to deliver them. I'm going to set them free. I'm going to cause them to be free of this spirit that in bondage that have brought them in, in, in bondage. I want you to be a light. I want you to be a voice. I want you to be my hand. I want you to be my feet. I want you to be the one that I called you to be. Walk the path that I called you to walk. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God is calling us. But will we hear? Will we listen? Amen. So he said to Jeremiah, Thus said the Lord, Stand ye in the way, and see, and ask for the old path. And other words, God said, Return to holiness. Where is the good way? See, where is the good, what is the good way? Holiness. Holiness. Set apart. That's the good way. Amen. And walk therein. And you shall find rest for your soul. And notice what it said. But they said, talking about the people whom he, he's talking to. Now he, he's, talk, he's talking back to them. He, now this is what the people said now. But they said, we will not walk therein. Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, Hearken unto the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hearken, we will not hear, we will not honor. Amen. O ye earth, behold, I will bring evil calamity upon this people. This is verse number, I think it's verse number 19. O ye earth, behold, I will bring evil upon this people. Mm -hmm. Amen. Calamity. Right. Amen. Even the fruit of your thoughts because they have not hearkened unto my words nor to my law but rejected it. But rejected it. Amen. 
See, God is calling us back to righteousness. God is calling us back to holiness. God is calling us back to a lifestyle where his nature will be more prevalent in our lives. Where the world, when the world look upon us, they'll, they, they, they'll, they, they won't, they won't see, they won't see you. They'll see the light of God shining upon our path, of shining upon our, our brow. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, his brow was glowing with the presence of God. The people didn't can see Moses behind because of the glory of God was all so strong on him. They had to cover their, they had to cover their face in order to see him. They couldn't look upon him. Amen. God wants you to be the light of the world. He said, so that you can let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. But how are you going to do that if you're still connected to the world, living as the world, doing things that contrary to the will of God because you want to be a, a man pleaser rather than a God pleaser? Amen. See, God doesn't get pleasure out of seeing you being a man pleaser because you've strayed away from the path. <clears throat> and you chose to you chose to walk in a way that's dishonor that dishonors God. <clears throat> and so we need to we need to get our hearts in the right place again. We need to begin to see the thing that God has called us to see. The Bible commentary notes that the people stubbornly refused to walk in the traditions, in the traditional way of the true righteousness. See, when you refuse, then that that's that's on that's on that's on you, not on God. That's on you. Amen. When they refuse, they said, "God, I'm going. I'm going to move him out. I'm going. I'm going to walk the way I want to walk. You you gave me a free will. I'm going to walk the way I want to walk. I'm going to live the way I want to live." I want to do what I want to do. See, it's all about I, I, selfishness. People, are big, they, they become so selfish. It's all about I. I this and I that. When God has given us an opportunity, folks, God has given us an opportunity to be the men and the women he created us to be. God has given us the opportunity to be the king and the priest that he called us, that he had chose us to, chose us to be. Amen. And that what he said in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. For you are a chosen generation. See, God chose you. He chose you to walk this walk. He chose you didn't, you thought you you thought you you picked it out on your own? No, you didn't. You didn't pick it out on your own. God chose you and you accepted it. Amen. You accepted the call. You're a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. This is the way God sees us. But when we choose not to walk this way, the Bible tells us in the book of Romans chapter 10. And we look, let me show you. Romans chapter 10. Because so many people have gone about to establish their own way, guys, and they not they don't see they don't see it God's way, so they want to do it their own way. And Roman, here we go. That just started me first one. My brother, my heart and desire to pray for God for Israel that they might be saved. See, God wants every man to be saved. <clears throat> for a better and regular. That they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Verse number three. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness and not submitting themselves to the righteousness of God. See, this is what this is the how this is the way, this is the nature of man. They're going about to establish their own way of doing of, of pleasing God and not doing it God's way. Verse number four says, For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone that believe it. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. <clears throat> but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, 
Say not in thine heart, who shall descend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down from above? Or who shall descend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up again from the dead? But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, see this is how you, this is how you convert from your way of righteousness to God's way of righteousness. He tells us right there in verse number what? Huh? No, not verse number seven. Verse number, look at verse number eight. But what say that the word is not even in thy mouth and in thy heart. And that is the word of faith which we preach. That verse number nine. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved from your old path. <laughs> thou shalt be saved from your old sinful nature. Thou shalt be saved from your man-pleasing ideals. Amen. Verse number 10 said, For with the heart men believe it unto righteousness. See, you can't, you can't walk upright unless you are being led by the Lord to walk upright. You can't walk upright in your own strength. It's that, that's what God called uh, uh, self-motivation. You try to do it in your own strength, and you can't do it in your own strength because if you could do it in your own strength, what Christ would need to come to die for? You can't do it yourself. So he said, for, for with the heart man believe it unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto what? And to salvation. Your deliverance come when you begin to experience who Christ is. Your life begin to change, begin to be transformed at the moment you understand that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that he laid down his life so that you can live. Notice what it said verse number 11. For the scripture said, whosoever shall Whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed. For the for there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all that call upon him. Look at verse number 13. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall be saved. Amen. Shall be saved from what? From that old path. Shall come that they shall be delivered from that wide path that lead to destruction. How are you going to be delivered from that path? By yielding to God's way of righteousness. Not you going about to establish your own righteousness because you don't want to submit to the righteousness of God. See, if you submit to, to the righteousness of God, God is going to deliver you from that old path. And you're going to begin to experience the new path that leads into the gate, the gate that leads to life eternal. For narrow is the way, for narrow is the gate, for narrow is the way, and and, and, and straight, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way to lead into life everlasting, or eternal life. Amen? So we have to see, we have to see what God is saying to us as a people, because you see, the path that God has called us to walk is separated from the world. Amen? It's separated from the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 1. It just dropped in my spirit. Let's see what it says. in my spirit. It must be something he wants us to see. Amen. So read verse number one. Now concerning these things whereof ye wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man... No, this is not it. Come on, Lord. Give me a 
a second. Yeah. Second, second Corinthians chapter one. Second Corinthians chapter one. I know it was something about some Corinthians, and I know it was seven one. But notice what it said. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from what? All filthiness of the flesh and spirit. And get this part. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Can y'all see that now? Amen. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Receive us. We have wronged no man. We have corrupted no man. We have defrauded no man. I speak not this to condemn you, for I have said there I have said before, and that ye are in our hearts to die and live with us, with you. Amen. See, God wants you to consider where you are. He wants you to consider your way of walking. Where are you going? What are you doing? Who you talk to? And get this, how you're talking to them. How can we please God? And how can we say we are living, that, that, we are, that we are on our, we are on a road that, that's, straight, that, that's straight and narrow path if we are not able to govern, uh, 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 uh. Conduct ourselves or govern your own heart. You're not allowing God to to to, to lead you. Uh, you. You're not allowing the Spirit of God to direct you. You're allowing you 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 still being led by the flesh. And and they, and, 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 and and that flesh. It will cause you to err in your walk. Because you be wanting to entertain things that you should be restraining yourself from. You be wanting to go places where you should be turning away from. You will begin to hold a conversation that you should not even consider to be thoughts or words coming out of your heart. What you did, you have allowed access to the enemy. Now the enemy began to plant those tares in your field. And as those tares begin to grow along with your good wheat, whatever that's in your field, the tares are going to begin to choke the life out of you and they're going to cause you to become and it's going to cause you to begin to depend upon his strength or what he can do for you. Or what he can do for you. Because you have neglected the path that God called you to walk. It's time to hear the word of the Lord. And it's time to turn away our hearts from the things of this world. It's time to, it's time to begin to examine our motives why we do what we do. And our motives should be pure before God. God is calling us and he's given us an opportunity to change. Will you come out from among them? Father, I have declared that what you have given me for the day. Now, Lord, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus. Let your word penetrate our hearts and let us see ourselves rising above the storms of life, walking in the path that you've called us to walk, looking unto Jesus as the author and the finish of our faith. So we'll not be con con condemned because of the world. God, we humble ourselves, we ask you to show yourself strong on our behalf. In Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. It's time for us to take our morning offering right now.
Those of you that are with us by the internet, you can sow your seed today. You can go to my website, BlackBurgerMinistries.com. You can plant your seed of faith, amen. And uh, those of you that are here in the building, in the building with us, you can uh, sow your seed here. Amen. And let's see God, because I believe that we, 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 hit, we, we cover a lot of ground today, but there's still so much to cover. Because when we when we say when we say God, I want what you want for me. That means I have to begin to renew my mind. I have to begin to to study the Word of God. I have to begin to spend time with Him. Amen. And this is what God is asking of us. So as we come to this place, let us draw close to Him. And as we do, He's going to draw closer to us. And those things that have been a hindrance to us are going to begin to drop off. Amen. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen. Father, I pray over this offering. I release my faith, God, in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, Lord God, that you would touch, that you would minister, that you would strengthen, that you would empower, that you would encourage your people, Lord God. To follow after those things which are just, those things which are pure, those things which are lovely, those things which are honest, those things which are of a good report. You said, you said, should there be any virtue or any praise? We should think on these things. And in thinking on these things, Father, we will not give in to the things of this world, but we will follow after righteousness. God, we bless your name and we give you glory for what you're doing now in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all receive, receive the offering? Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you're here today and you never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. Uh, I know you all have been born again, but there may be some that are listening by the internet that have never invited Jesus Christ in their heart. Amen. And for you, I'm going to give you that opportunity to acknowledge Jesus Christ and to invite him to come into your heart. Right now, if that's you and you know that you're living outside of God's perfect plan, God's will for your life, I'm going. I'm talking to you. Or maybe you saying, Pastor, I, I live. I, I've been born again, but I've never, I've never been able to live the life that pleases God. And 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 I and I maybe I just need to rededicate my life to the Lord. Maybe I need to just come to God afresh and new. But I'm talking to you also. Or maybe you say, Pastor. I've never been born again, and I want to be saved today. How can I be saved? Well, I'm, this is you, you, the main reason I'm here, to show you the way to Christ and the way of life. Jesus said, come to me, all ye that are hate, labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Now, right now, God wants you to come to him. He wants you to come to him by faith. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if you open up, he's going to come to you all right now. Say this prayer with me. Everyone that you want to rededicate your life to the Lord, or you want to come to God for the first time, say this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sin. Forgive me, Lord. Come into my heart. Create in me a right spirit. And renew in me a clean heart. Jesus, forgive me. I'm so sorry. I accept the sacrifice that you gave to the world. I accept it as though you did it only for me. I receive your salvation, forgiveness of my sin. Today, I commit my life and surrender my heart to you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Woo. Glory to God. If you said that prayer right now, in the name of Jesus, the angels are working on your behalf. Yes. Bring you to a place where you will begin to experience true salvation true salvation. 
This is God's will for each of us. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Now, those of you that need prayer right now, I will pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I exercise the authority that you've given me, Father, concerning your people and the enemy that's working against their health. Right now, Father, I pray for her husband. He's taking the test. He knew that he's negative. So, Father, I come against this cold, this germ that's attached itself to his, to his body, and I release that anointing of healing right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that as she's standing in the gap for her husband, Lord, I declare and decree right now that his sinus is open, his nasal system is clear, and his chest is, is, is open, and his lungs is working properly. In Jesus' name, I decree it now. Now, Father, I thank you that he's healed. Now, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Turn around. Turn on. There you go. In the name of Jesus. It stopped. In Jesus' name. Complete turnaround. Complete turnaround. It's yours. It's yours. It's yours. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I felt that one. Thank you, Lord. I felt that one. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release your anointing right now, Father, from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Feel his expectation, his heart, to the overflowing with the Holy Ghost. The fresh fire from the crown of his head to the soles of his feet, driving out every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. Lord, may your kingdom come, may your will be done in his life, in earth as it is in heaven. Now, in Jesus' name, thank you that it's done. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Shout out of us so to nobody. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Everybody else is good? Father, we pray for those that are with us by the internet. We thank you, Father, for them. We release our faith on their behalf, Father. We declare a turnaround in their life as well. A turnaround in their life as well. And Father. We give you all the praise and all the glory for what you're doing right now in Jesus' name. Thank you for joining us this morning. Join us again tonight. We have a, a special service for you tonight, and we believe that you're going to be blessed. We love you. Until then, bye-bye.